What if I told you that the food on your plate holds secrets far beyond what you can taste, smell, and see? That beneath the surface of every bite is a hidden world that's only visible by a microscope. This is a food's microstructure. It controls not only how a food behaves, but also how our body digests it, which means a calorie isn't always a calorie. And those nutrition facts on the back of your favorite snack? Well, they're not always accurate. I've been fascinated by food microstructure probably since I started my master's degree since I did research into the microstructure of ice cream and whipped topping. And at the time I mostly was linking like, how does the microstructure of these foods impact how fastly they uh, melt down or how they feel in our mouth. But today I want to talk to you about how the food microstructure impacts something even more important. And that's how you get nutrients and digest food. What I mean by a food's microstructure is just like, the small scale architecture of a food or how the different components like the proteins, fats, carbohydrates, and water, how are these different parts arranged? These structures, they're too small to be seen with the naked eye, but scientists using different types of microscopes and other tools, they can actually see how are these different, you know, components arranged in different foods. Now, I know it might be weird at first to think of your food like this, but it is really made of different components that can be organized into different layers or networks or dispersions. And this structure is really what determines the food as we know it. I guess a good comparison might be like a house. A house is a complete structure but you really can break it down into its components, right? It's walls, it's doors, it's windows, it's a roof, it's floors. And depending how each of these components is arranged, you could build a house, you know, that's strong enough to stand up against a hurricane, or you can build a house that, you know, crumbles with just a slight breeze. Food is very similar. Each food product has its very distinct and unique microstructure. So for example, meat. Well, meat is really like these protein fibers arranged into larger bundles where like water and fat is interspersed between those proteins. Cheese is really a protein network that's strong enough to hold in water, fat droplets, and other ingredients, and it gives it sort of this jelly or semi-solid texture. Meanwhile, bread is also composed of a network of gluten proteins this time that trap in air bubbles, giving bread that like light airy texture. And it's really this specific arrangement in foods, it can actually affect, are we able to access the nutrients and use them, you know, to fuel our body. This microstructure has huge impacts for our health. Let me give you like a very classic food microstructure example. So this study looked at two different porridges, which is a hot cereal made from wheat. Now, as an American, we don't call it porridge. Usually we call it oatmeal because it's made from oats and not wheat. But what you'll see is the results are the same because it really comes down to the grain structure. It doesn't matter the specific grain used. And what this study did was they looked at two different porridges, one made from coarse wheat and another made from a finely ground wheat. And they looked at how the digestion, how we're able to absorb those nutrients differs between those two porridges. And what the study found is absolutely fascinating because you think, okay, these two porridges are made from the same wheat. So they should have the same nutrients, the same type of digestion, but that is not what they saw. The people who ate the coarse porridge, their blood sugar levels were 33% lower than the people who ate the finely ground wheat porridge. Why was that? Because they have different microstructures. Let me explain. Plant-based foods have a very distinct microstructure because plants, if you remember like way back to high school biology, 
plants have a cell wall. It's like this rigid barrier that encloses all the other nutrients we want to use, like the proteins, the carbs, the fats. They're inside sort of this fibrous cage in plants, which means when we eat plant foods, our digestive enzymes, our gastric juices, they first have to break apart that cellular matrix, break apart that barrier, that cell wall to finally release the nutrients that we can now digest and absorb. Which is exactly why the porridge made from the coarse oats did not have that huge spike in blood sugar levels. How is that possible? Well, in this case, it's the processing that changed the microstructure of the grain. Because the wheat that was very finely ground, it actually had that plant cell wall, you know, ripped open due to that grinding. So the nutrients, the carbohydrates, the proteins would be much easier for us to absorb once eating that porridge. This is exactly why the finely ground grains led to a rapid spike in blood glucose levels, right? The nutrients were more readily available to our body. If you're enjoying this video about the different components of food and how they're arranged in the food products you eat, you would also enjoy my course, Food Science for Beginners. This is an online self-paced course where I teach you to think like a food scientist. You'll learn about the basic molecules in foods, different food ingredients, and the chemical reactions that happen in your kitchen every day. If you're interested, you can find a link in the description. But food microstructure impacts more than just blood sugar levels and how we digest sugar. And I want to show you another interesting study that looked at digesting whole almonds versus finely ground almonds. And what they found is that when you eat the whole nut, you actually don't absorb a lot of the fat that is present, which meant that the calories on the nutrition panel they were overestimated by about 32%. Now, as you might expect, when you eat the ground almonds, because processing has ruptured that structure, now you do absorb all of that fat. So the calories are accurate. So there's really this difference in microstructure of a you know whole intact almond versus finely ground almond, where it's altering how much fat you absorb and actually are the calories accurate or not. But a food's microstructure doesn't just impact how quickly we can absorb different nutrients from foods. It also has a huge impact on satiety or how full you feel after eating certain foods. And to explain this, I want to show you like one landmark study, kind of one of the first studies looking at food microstructure, where they tested apple juice, apple puree, and whole apples. Now, which of these foods will make you feel full for longer? And they tested this and they even made each food have the same amount of calories. So all foods, it doesn't matter if you have the juice, the puree or apple, same amount of calories you're ingesting. And what did they see? The apple, the whole apple always makes people feel more satiated, feel fuller. Again, part of this is that the cellular structure is intact in the whole apples, but there is another factor here. And you might have experienced this if you've ever tried to replace a meal with a shake. And you may have noticed that liquid foods, they do not keep you feeling very full for long. And that's because liquid food is emptied from our stomach much more fast than solid food because solid food needs to stay in the stomach. It needs to be broken down by our gastric acids, our gastric juices, and our digestive enzymes before it can be passed along to our small intestine. And what this means for you is that you feel more full, more satiated when you have, when you have eaten these solid foods because they are actually staying in your stomach for longer. One other added benefit of the whole apple is the presence of fiber. And if you remember a ways back, I mentioned that the cell wall in plants, it's composed of fibers, different fibers like cellulose, hemicellulose, or lignin. And fiber has a very unique effect in our stomach. It's these really long molecules that once they're released, they actually uh, thicken or add viscosity to the contents in our stomach which makes us feel full for longer. It kind of makes it act more like a semi-solid food. 
And this means it's much slower for our stomach to release this food into the intestines due to that fiber sort of thickening up the food. And if you want this added benefit of fibers, Fiber is actually only found in plant-based foods. You're not going to find it in animal foods because again, animals don't have that fibrous cell wall. They just don't have a cell wall that's unique to plant-based foods. So if you want sort of these like good health benefits from fiber, you need to make sure you're eating plant foods. This was just a little peek at what I am absolutely obsessed with the food microstructure because it impacts things like how much nutrients you get and whether you feel full or not. And if you enjoyed this video, next I would recommend my deep dive into the science behind why we pair certain foods.